Hello there, and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. This will be a quick review first before we start anything important. Uh, I've uploaded a bunch of little tutorials into a small zip file that you can use before watching this. They cover the basics and they're pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is go into Composition, New Composition, and as you can see, I'm going to set width to 1280 and height by 720. This is just typical 720p HDV video. For the pixel aspect ratio, I'm going to select square pixels. For the frame rate, I'm going to select 23.976. Resolution, this is just the, for the display. For this, I'm just going to select third so we can preview quickly. Duration, I'm going to select one minute. And now let's open up my timeline. I'm in the composition that I've just created. A composition is basically a folder you can consider with the, the bounds being the width and height that you've set. You cannot exceed that unless you work with another composition within a composition. Just consider a folder for now in case it's too confusing. So what I'm going to start with is just a simple pan with a camera layer. So I'm going to go click on the timeline here so I can insert stuff into the timeline. Go to layer, new, camera. I'm going to select 35mm camera, that's fine. You don't want anything too big or too small because it won't have a really depth of zoom. You don't want to enable ed enable depth of field yet. It is very useful, but it's not good for editing while you're editing. It's better to do it after and while you're finalizing your steps, and I'll explain that later, maybe in future tutorials. But for now, we're just going to choose 35mm camera. And now we just have a camera, but we have no actual layers yet to work it with. So I'm just going to, I've imported a few layers here, a few anime. Um, I'm just going to delete these two from previous projects, and so I can do it over. So I have a one layer here and another. I'm just going to delete the first one. I'm not going to use hotkeys for this tutorial because I haven't set up my Camtasia properly yet and the hotkeys won't work because they're bound to Camtasia right now. So I have two layers here. They're 2D right now. You can't move them in 3D layer in the 3D space yet even though there is a camera. Well that's because we haven't set on the 3D switch yet. On each layer, if you go to the left side, there's a little cube right here, and it's the 3D layer switch. It allows the layers to be manipulated in 3D dimensions. And all that does is just turn on the, the Z position and the X and Y orientations. So we're just going to select these two. So now both of these layers are movable in 3D. Now they can be affected by the camera. Now we're going to also talk about the camera now. Typically, Advanced users will use the camera on their own. It is accurate to use, but sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, it can yield unexpected results. So we're just going to do this more accurate and easy way. I'm just going to go to Layer, New, Null Object. A null object is basically just an empty layer. There's nothing there. It doesn't physically display anything. It is a layer that holds a set of data, a set of data though. So you can select things, you can put objects on it, and parent things. Parenting me things one layer to another means to acquire the same amount of effects to it from the master. So I'm just going to take the camera here, the camera layer, highlight it, click on the whip tool, and drag it over to the null layer. Now this is now parented to the null layer. So whatever I do in the null layer will happen in the camera layer, which the camera layer, of course, affects all 3D objects. So I'm just going to select 3D on for the null object. And now since these layers are already in 3D, I can, I can start moving them in the null object, or in 3D space. I'm going to twirl down the null object here, twirl open transform, keyframe position, scale, orientation, and Z rotation. That's all we're going to use for the today. We can also put anchor point. I guess you can just put them all on in case I miss something. So now we have all keyframes for the start. Now we're just going to do a simple panning here. You can apply more than one thing, even if I just show you one application. So this is ready to be moved in 3D space. I'm going to select the bottom layer here, and I want that to move to the right. So I'm going to left click on it, hold shift, and move it to the right in 3D space. Of course you can't see it yet because I haven't keyframed the camera, but you can see the outline of the footage. So if you watch here, if I move to a little, little bit to the right and forward in time, and I just move the position over, you can see it's now moving in 3D space. Well, it's still 2D here because I haven't used the Z position yet, but it's pan. It's a pan and that's good enough. 
Now I'm just going to adjust this a little bit because it hasn't quite moved to the edge. There we go. So now we have a simple zoom. The keyframes, however, are very linear. This is not smooth at all. It's just a normal pan with the, you can still see the line between the two footages. It's not aesthetically very pleasing. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the velocity of these keyframes. Now, right now these keyframes are linear, meaning they move at a constant speed. At all times bef between these keyframes, they're going to move at the exact same speed that the keyframes are placed apart. So right now we have about one second. So they're going to move from the left to right. It's only going to take one second to move each frame right here to the next. And that's really not smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight two keyframes. Now this will only work if you highlight two or more keyframes. I'm going to click on the graph editor tool here. And this allows me to, to see the speed, the speed graph. The velocity is in the y-axis and time is in the x-axis. As you can see, it's a straight line. That just means it's a constant speed. Now, if I unclick the graph editor, I'm going to highlight these two. Now, for this, you can use F9 for a quick hotkey to turn them into easy ease keyframes. But since I can't use the hotkeys right now, I'm just going to right-click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. The keyframes just turn to an hourglass shape. That just shows that it's an easy ease now. If we, these are still selected. So if you haven't selected them, just to re-highlight them. And I'm going to click on the graph editor again. Now, as you can see, it's in a parabola shape now. When you're driving a car, for example, and you're driving very fast and you stop all of a sudden, it's not very smooth, right, is it? So if you consider a car slowly accelerating, going fast, then slowing down again. It's a much better and smoother ride. So here, what I've done is by easy easing the keyframes, the keyframes will slowly speed up to a point and then slow down again. This will make the keyframes very smooth. So now I'm just going to ram preview this. It's not bad. The keyframing isn't bad now. But we still have this problem that there's a line between these these footages. We're going to add some motion blur here. So I'm just going to go here and turn on the master motion blur. If you don't have this on at all, even if you have your motion blur set switched on on any layers, it's not going to work. So you want this on. I'm just going to go to the layer. It's two boxes to the left of the 3D switch and just click motion blur for both of them. Now, as you can see in the footage, there's a motion blur and that's going to look better. I'm going to move this forward a little bit so we can see the beginning of the motion before it moves and then after. I'm just going to ram preview this. And that's not bad. Pretty smooth. Not quite what we want yet. It's still a 2D. This can still be acquired by nonlinear editors and linear editors just by panning to the right with the transition or something. We're going to add more spice to this. So maybe we can add a jerk or something. So what I'm going to do is go to the middle and create another keyframe. And what I can do with this is that we still have the two end keyframes, meaning at the start it has to end as, as the start, like this, with the full frame inside. And at the end it has to end with this full frame. But if I go to the middle and say I zoom in a little bit and I move up a little bit that means in the middle it has to make a jerk in and up before going back out that's a, a, that adds a little bit more of a spice I, I think I would think so anyways so what I'm gonna do is just make these all easy ease for ease of keyframing you don't want easy ease for everything some things you'll require to have linear keyframes for example if you're moving between three spots in 3d space if you if you want a smooth transition between all of the keyframes, you're going to want some linear keyframes in between. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and slowing down. And it's very redundant and repetitive, and it's not very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm just going to RAM preview this now. Now, much better. It's going in, up, and out. Very smooth. I like it. But there's still a problem here. Now, this is going to move on to some motion graphic knowledge a little bit. It's going to be really easy, though, the way I set it up for you. So we still have that line between from the blur. What 
a blur does it it's, it's it feathers it feathers and creates a blur according to the speed of the motion so I'm going to effects and presets here I'm going to type in repetile and what this does is it's an effect that tiles your footage now typically you don't want to have the top one tile over the bottom or it just cuts off when you get to the end keyframe it's gonna have some overlap so I'm just gonna click on this and drag to the bottom one it's okay if the bottom one it underlaps the first one so this allows me to tile the footage it's very nice because sometimes if you're doing a zoom inexperienced editors will just keep on scaling the footage to fit the resolution of the, of the frame and the screen and that doesn't look very good it's also not in proportion to the screen and it's physically unpleasant so I'm just going to go to CC Repetile here expand left a little bit and as you can see it's filled in the black pixels I'm just going to click on tiling and select checker flip H and that just repeats the colors from where it left off and makes an exact opposite checker tile so it flipped 180 degrees then tiled itself which is very nice because then you can make the illusion that you have now duplicated your or expanded your bounds without losing quality of course which what you would if you were scaling so I'm just gonna play this now okay not bad there's still a line here you can still tell there's a clear color difference so what I'm going to do is a little trick. I'm going to put Repetile on the first clip too. This takes a little bit more practice to do, but I'll just use it here for the sake of having a smooth transition. I'm going to expand this to the right. I'm going to checker flip horizontal again. But as you can see, there's an overlap here. So what I'm going to do is just keep on expanding this, and then I'll duplicate this layer. So go to edit, duplicate, and I'm going to move Repetile off the top one. I do this so that I can change the opacity in the bottom layer as the camera moves. This way it'll be a smoother transition and it'll fade in without losing any, that's going to have a seamless color transition and it's going to be a very nicer look, much better and nicer looking. So I'm just going to twirl this down. I click T for the hotkey. It seems T still works and you're going to keyframe opacity. You can do it from the beginning of the transition, but that looks really weird sometimes, and I'll just do it from the middle, from the jerk transition. Go to the end here, and just pull down opacity zero. And let's see how this looks. Of course, we see Kurapiki here, and it zooms in, you see him twice, not very nice. So we're just going to move this a little bit back, meaning I want this to fade earlier, but we still want that nice color transition. So maybe I move the keyframes a little bit closer. I'll move them in front a little bit so I have a more of a color change. And that should do the trick, I believe. Okay. This isn't always perfect. You're going to have to experiment, but sometimes this will work if there aren't very hard color differences. And I'll just ram preview this again. And now we have an interesting blur. Interesting blur, zoom in out. In this case, the repetile on the bottom layer didn't work, so I can just remove that. We're also going to remove the repetile in here, which is already done. We can just keep this as it looks nicer with just a side zoom. Okay. So sometimes we're going to want to change the speed of this. So let me click, let me highlight these three position ones. Graph editor. So say you want it to be, it starts off really slow and gradually get faster and end fast. What you can do is click on the keyframe, click and drag the Bezier handles. And what you can do is actually change the speed of it. You can change the influence of these frames, these keys. So what's happening now is that in time, I'm going to start off very slow, go very fast, then slow down smoothly again. So let's just try and ram preview this. This is the secret to motion graphics, by the way, to make things very smooth.
It won't always be smooth because you'll have to experiment with it, but in this case, let's just see what happens. It went slow, then very fast, and then went back down slow again. It's looking nice and smooth now. It's not bad. This will work for some applications, and this will end the first installment of my After Effects tutorial.